Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Today, we're going to talk about psychic politics. Basically, I guide, I guide, I use my guides to channel information for you guys. And the energy is really high right now. So I'm going to try to just get into my blend with them, which is basically 60% them 40% me. You can see that I'm taking some breaths. I'm trying to blend this a little bit better. I've been gone for a week because I did my first big event in Chicago. I had a hundred, uh, over a hundred people, basically like 115 people join me. And look, we did our best. Okay. We had a shaman literally open up a portal. I kid you not in the middle of the signature ballroom at the Double Tree Hotel at O'Hare Airport in Chicago. Yes, we opened up a portal and 115 or 20 of us stood together, linked hands, and hell, I don't know what happened, but you would have thought it would have had some good effect on the earth. <laughs> but no, instead, I come back to all hills breaking loose. I will say that it had a fantastic effect on us, on me. I am forever changed by that event and the people that I met Thank you all who joined me and thank you so much to my speakers. If you want to know more about that event, you can go to connect to empower.com. The event's over, but you can learn a little bit about who was there. And I just asked the guides, you know, could we like do that? Like, could I get this powerful shaman whose name is Mary and who has a business called the rustic Raven? Um, can I get her to come back and maybe we could all get together and do that washing machine thing that we did that kind of chugga chug. I don't know. Look, it was wild. I couldn't videotape it because it was sacred. Anyway, can we do that and like eject Trump from the planet? I mean, could we do that? And the guides were like, we're not even going to answer that question. <laughs> what? I don't understand as a human. I know I have a limited, you know, like, authority here or understanding, but it could be so much easier, right? Couldn't we just all get together, mind meld, chant, drum? I don't care, dude. I'm all about it now. I saw what happened during that thing. And just like eject these people from the planet. I mean, they're they're, they're showing me, for those of you guys to play video games, because I really don't, it's like, you can't eject a player. Like that's not one of your tools. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, He's a player on the planet Earth, as is Jim Jordan, as is Hamas. And uh, we are in a active, they're saying it was activated. We're all activated. Therefore, we cannot be deactivated. I can't deactivate them. I don't know. Anyway, I just thought I would try. Y'all know I try. I'm your spokesperson. I go to the guides and I do my best. Okay, now let's get down to business. Holy cannoli. Uh, my first question is from Anne, and uh, yeah, I got back, and this is what I see on the news, and I did not watch the news for six glorious days. Well, apparently there, and, and if you're not watching the news, this will be news to you, and I can already debunk everything that's happened, so that's good. So you can learn about the news, get upset, and then be okay all in five minutes, which is the way I want my news, you know, to be. So there was an attack on um, Northern Gaza, in which last night or yesterday, it was reported by all of the news agencies. This was a big deal. And it was also reported by um, one of the Democratic Congress women, who I think happens to be Muslim. She, she reported this news as well, that Israel bombed a hospital in Northern Gaza and 500 people were dead. Um, and there was video, there was video, it was nighttime video, there was video, it looked horrible, it looked horrendous, and it looked plausible. It looked plausible. It didn't happen, folks. It was a head fake. It did not happen. The whole thing didn't happen. What did happen was a bomb sent from Hamas, you know, blew up in midair, you know, didn't, wasn't successful. And a part of that bomb fell in the parking lot of that hospital. And yes, there are people who died and that's terrible. Um, there were people in the parking lot that, that died. We think there might be less than 50. The hospital was not terribly damaged. Uh, some of the stained glass windows were blown out, but the hospital was not damaged. 500 people did not die. 
and Hamas is the 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 people that sent the bomb. They sent it to Israel. They didn't, I don't believe, well, there is some energy around this, but I don't think this particular time they meant for it to be a false flag operation, meaning um, an operation against their own people, okay? So what does this mean? You, This is a really important. This is super important that we talk about this because first of all, it means that our news agencies bought into false disinformation. They bought into a, a video that was not verified, that was wrong. They bought into the idea that Israel bombed a hospital. And this this is all, this is what's wrong with our world right now. We cannot trust the news because the news is not trustworthy. And there's such good head fakes. There's such good disinformation out there that it's hard to disseminate. It's hard to not disseminate. It's hard to discern which news is right and which news is wrong. Number one. Number two, that is a, that, let me just, they want me to just stay there for a second. Let that sink in. Okay. Before, when you see something horrible and you see a video, I want you to understand that right now in this timeline, the guides are saying eight times out of 10, eight out of 10, it's, it's disinformation. It's not real. So if you see a baby, something bad happening to a baby, something bad happening to people, I need you to put that on ice. I need you to wait it out 24 hours, 24 hours before you decide that is real and the world's going into a handbasket because this is where we we are. And this is why this is very important because, because certain Groups, let's whoever, Iranians, Muslims, whoever, certain groups saw that video and certain countries, leaders decided to disseminate, there's the word in the right place, that that video to their people to enrage them, to fire them up against Israel and against America, to be honest with you, and against anybody, Britain, the West, any of their foes, they are, they are using this as tender to ignite a match, to ignite fire amongst their people. Now, whereas, and never mind, they want me to go back to this. Several embassies are being attacked right now. This is, uh, this was the match that lit the fire and it, and it's all wrong. It's not even correct. It's disinformation, but it does not matter. Want to know why it doesn't matter? Because it aligns with these people's belief that Israel is a monster. So they don't care if it's true or not. It aligns with their beliefs. So they're going to take that and allow that to be the vent that opens up their anger. The anger that's been seething, the anger that's been in control, they now have permission to open it up. And you guys, that is exactly what has happened in MAGA land. You guys are always asking why, how can these people not see the truth? How can they not see facts? Honey, they don't want to see the truth of the facts. They want justice their own brand of justice and their seething anger is against people that don't look like them, black people, brown people, any kind of people that aren't white. So they don't care if it's true. These people in Iran don't care that it's true. It, it finally matches their anger. It allows their anger out. Anger that even could be generational, that could be passed down from generations to generations, that this country did thus to us, you know, a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago or 10 years ago. So this was all a head fake, but unfortunately it's being used to start a war. It's being used to start a hot war is what the guides want to say. And I know there's a specific definition for hot war. 
versus Cold War. This is a hot war. Now, out of all the shit that is happening in our world, this is concerning because because what what I was going to say, what they interrupted me and wanted me to stick with the embassies for, I'm sure there's a reason for that. What I what I wanted to what Susan thought was was important and wanted to say was these people in Iran or Afghanistan or ISIS or Hamas or Hezbollah, any of these people, any of these citizens that aren't in those terrorist groups, but who believe that they've been wronged by the West or wronged by Israel, um, they have cousins. Uncles, sisters, second, fourth cousins, friends, family in America, in Britain, in Australia, everywhere. Now you have the potential for that tinderbox in those very controlled, um, controlled in the media sense that they only get fed what their countries want them to know. You now have those people that are so enraged, so incensed, they've been activated. They're going to be texting and communicating with their friends and family in the West. And in as much as you have people here that could be vulnerable to this type of rhetoric, this type of programming, then then we, we have more problems here with, you know, that kind of, I may have to be careful about the words I use. Um, that kind of thing, that kind of uh, action here in the West. Okay, Do I, you can put it together. You guys are smart people. Um, so now let me say, the first thing I want you to do is understand when you see something crazy, even if it's ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, I don't care who it is, you need to take a chill pill because we all got egg on our face. Well, not we. I didn't do it. I was sitting on a plane. But the the the, the royal we got egg on our face. Okay. And they, they should all be mea culpa. They should all be, you know, saying on air, we screwed up. They should be saying that. I don't really know that they're going to, but they should be, because this is this is the deal. It's it's as far as I'm concerned, that's what happened. Uh now. So number one, be careful of disinformation. Number two, we need to we need to send we we need to not get caught on fire. Uh, the fire that's that's like raging like a wildfire out of Middle East. We don't want to get caught on fire in the reverse for Israel or for whatever. I mean, we we need to be we need to be cold. Our energy needs to be cold. If we start to get wrapped up into this and be and be caught on fire, then we're adding fire to the energy. So I would prefer we don't do that. I would prefer that we make our energy ice cold right now. Okay. I, I a lot of you guys are asking me in these comments, how do I handle this? How do I handle this energy? And I know that my viewers, my political viewers, don't really watch my spiritual videos, but I'm just going to tell you guys, I did a video before I left last week. It's in my Way Out Wednesday videos, and it basically tells you how to handle this stuff. And I did it because I had a feeling all hell was going to break loose while I was gone. So I did a video, how to handle the energy. It might be something you want to watch. It might help you deal with this energy because this isn't going anywhere. We are in the frying pan. The guides just told me we are in the frying pan. Now, I'm going to help you understand how I think we're going to get out of this and how we're going to get out of this in one piece. The next thing I'm going to tell you is, is that, look, I, I like Biden. I, right now, I love Biden. I, I wish he was more of an orator, but I love Biden. When he ran against Obama, I wasn't a fan. When he ran for president, I voted for him, but I wouldn't say that I was a super fan. I didn't work for his campaign. I gave him some money. You know, I, I didn't, I, I wanted him to win because he was running against Trump. I mean, he was, he was my man, but I've never been like, super huge fan of him, but I got to tell you right now today, I'm a super huge fan of him. And 
what's interesting is I was just talking to my guides this morning saying, I wish he was more of an orator. We need, we need someone like Obama who can talk, who, who, who is an orator, who can, God, calm us down, get a, get in front of us and be the leader and talk, talk, talk. And Biden with his speech impediment is not a talker, but I don't think he's a talker anyway. He's just not that kind of president. So I was kind of complaining, if you will, or, or talking to my guides about this this morning. And they told me, and this is what's going to make you feel better. They said, this man has got decades and decades. How many decades? 30 decades? I mean, 30 years, three decades, four decades. I don't know. Of experience. He knows Netanyahu from back in the day. He knows Putin. He's been briefed on all these people for decades. He has decades of information about them. He knows how they operate. He knows he knows the players, but he also knows what's at stake for the players. He knows what they want. And he's a Scorpio. Okay, so he's diving deep into that blackness. He can scuba dive down there and see what's up when the rest of us don't want to. So he's really the perfect guy for this explosion or explosive energy that's happening in the Middle East because he gets it. He knows, he knows these players, these problems, you know, are 50 years old or a hundred years old and in some cases longer. And he knows that there's nobody better. They're telling me, Susan, Obama was a great president and he could orate his ass off, but what you don't need an orator. You need somebody who can get in there, figure out what buttons to push. What button do I push to make Hamas do what they need to do? What button do I push to make Hezbollah? What button do I push to make Israel? What, what button do I push to put to make Palestine, Egypt, Putin? He's got it. He's got this information. And I truly believe what they're telling me now is that this, and I did know this, I mean, they, they told me this before, this is why he's president right now. This is why he didn't win. How many times has he run for president? He didn't win, he didn't win, he didn't win. He made vice president. This is why he came to this planet to do this. He came to this planet to be in the Senate forever, and, and to be that guy, you know, that guy that could walk across the aisle, that Scorpio that could dive into the muck, who could see both sides and, and make those concessions, right? Bring, he, bring he, he's got this ability to bring um, heated people to cool. He cools them. And there's that imagery again they gave you earlier about being cooling off, right? He's got that ability, but he also has the ability to smack the hell out of you too. So he's not a pushover. So he knows he right now is the man we need. He's the man of the hour. Um, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. And I feel like, I don't know how to describe this. And I don't want to, um, I, I feel like this is what he came here to do. And he's going to do it before he crosses. Let's put it that way. Okay. He's not going to cross until he does this. It, it, they're telling me it was foretold. It was It was foretold. What that means to me, it's contract. This is his sole contract. And, and, and I told you guys, well, some of you don't watch my spiritual videos, but when you got a contract, you got a contract. You signed that sucker before you came down here. And you're, they'll keep you alive to finish your contract. You know, if you're supposed to have a baby and you're 45 years old, well, guess what, honey? You're going to have a baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can put it off. You can delay. You can ask for extensions. But they're going to show up sooner or later with that little form on your signature on it going, honey, you signed this. Biden has signed this. He's He's going to be the man of the hour. He's going to find a way to work with Netanyahu and, and Israel, because Netanyahu does not represent Israel. Israel is very divided right now, just like the United States. Netanyahu is their Trump, is our Trump. He took over a divided country and he was a warmonger. I told you guys this when he was running. 
did a video. All I said all that. Um, he's in over his head. What they're telling me right now about Netanyahu, he's in over his head. He didn't think this was going to happen. It's complicated. It's a very complicated thing. It's not like Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine's minding their own damn business. Russia comes over and starts attacking them. This is not the same thing. The Palestinians have 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 you know blood in this, and so do the Israelis. It, it, they were put in an untenable situation, is what the guide said. These two parties were put in an untenable situation after World War II. Netanyahu is in over his head. He he thought with is Israel's flex, Israel's might, that they could keep Palestinians in in their place. You know, in in their settlements. And he thought he could be the strong man. Well, now, you know, Israel got a big black eye, a, a real big black eye. And, and that was terrible. What happened was an atrocity. And, and Hamas needs to pay for that. And anybody that had anything to do with it needs to pay for it. But Netanyahu's over his head. He's trying to get an opposition. He's trying to get an opposition government, which I think is, is a good idea. I think when I like that about Israel, that they will have, they'll form a government, a new government where they'll have the opposite, you know, two opposing sides govern at the same time. But Netanyahu's also the one who, who went after the, their Supreme Court rules and took more power for the government. And now he's got a lot of power, but he's in over his skis, y'all. He does not know how to handle this. This is, this was not what he wanted. And you've got other countries calling him going, you just started a hot war in the Middle East. And there wasn't one. There wasn't one before you got in office. Fix this, right? NATO's got their hands full, worrying about Ukraine and, and Russia. And now we've got NATO worrying about this situation. This, is, this has got everybody on pins and needles, okay? Okay. Biden is the man. Biden's going to come in and he's going to conk the ones over the head that he needs to conk over the head. He's going to going to get Netanyahu like this and be like, son, you better get it together. You, this is not a game. We're not playing a game here. You were you were you were playing a game. This is not a game. This is people's lives. You know, Biden gets really upset about that. When you disrespect power, when you disrespect the uh, the the power, the the ethics, the the rank. When you disrespect that kind of power, Biden will come for you. He will come for you. And I've told you guys, they're showing me right now. Remember, I've been talking to you guys about how McCarthy back in the day sat down with Biden. I want a meeting with Biden. Well, uh, McCarthy came back out with his little his little schoolboy shorts on and his socks pulled up to his knees. He was schooled by Papa Biden. Papa Biden said, no, sir. No, sir, son. Your kids as kids is going to be reading about you in history books and you're going to look a fool. Go back there and act right. And he started acting right. Not, not 100% because, you know, the devil can only do so much, right? But he did. He really did. That's how we got through the first budget, right? Was because right after that, McCarthy sat down and started being a little more sensible. He couldn't turn coat because he's owned by the minority of these Freedom Caucus jokers, right? So he couldn't turn coat. He got booted out anyway, but he was trying to play both sides for, for a minute. So I think that Biden is going to uh, fix this in some kind of way. I don't know how he's going to fix it. I think fix is too strong of a word. I think Biden is going to influence these people in this situation, I think the fire has started and I don't think we're going to put it out. I don't, I don't see us putting this fire out. I think at this point we need to contain it. We need to contain it to Iran. Um, oh, right. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that makes sense. This is all too convenient. You guys with, and hopefully I need to bookmark that and come back to it, but it's all too convenient for Russia. Right. Because now United States citizens are saying, whoa, we already got a big bill supporting Ukraine. Now you want us to send a, a what? what is it, a billion more dollars to Ukraine and Israel? And Americans are like, we don't think so. So that's going to help Putin. Right. This is all going to help Putin. And, and I do, do think there are links back to Trump. 
I think there are links. I think I think Trump gave Putin some information that Putin shared with Iran, and that's why Iran started sending drones to Russia. Remember when Iran started sending all those drones to Russia? And now six months later or less, uh, all of a sudden Hamas has got intel that nobody should have, that the mighty, the most, the, Israel is the biggest intel country in the world, the biggest. And they got caught with their pants down. That's because it was top secret information that was shared with somebody. And I think it came from Trump. It went to Putin. Putin sold it to a ram. Now, so this is all very convenient for the war that Putin is doing because now the world is all jacked up. So it just, it helped. It's too convenient. Now, the thing that I wanted to bookmark was that when I was going into Iran's energy, this is too convenient for Iran because Iran's got their own problems. I mean, they got women saying, we'll self-emulate or you can kill us because I'm not going to wear that stuff you want us to wear. In the 70s, Iran Iranian women were free to wear whatever. There was a modern society. They were going to college. They were going to university. They were coming to the United States. And then overnight, all their rights are gone and they have to wear all of this restrictive clothing. And now you're seeing Iranian women saying, Okay, fine. I'm not, life is not worth living. If you need to kill me, kill me. That's kind of hard thing to put down. When your people are to the point where they will lay their lives on the ground, it's very hard for a government to put that down. That's typically when the government says, let's make a concession. The same thing, Saudi Arabia. Women said, we want to drive. And if you want to kill us, go ahead, but we're going to drive cars. Saudi Arabia capitulated and said, okay, we'll give you this right. And they didn't give them a lot of rights, but they gave them that right. So this is very, this is very convenient for Iran to, to have a nice little distraction, to light their people up with anger and fury against the West and against Israel. So now nobody can think about somebody wearing restrictive clothing because now they got to think about their brothers and sisters being annihilated. And it doesn't matter if it never happened. It does not matter because you lit the match to the tinder that's been building for decades and maybe hundreds of years. The tinder was there. The match is lit. Now we, it doesn't matter what's true or false. It's exactly the magus. What's the magus tinder? Honey, let's go back to Reconstruction. Let's go back to the Civil War when white people were in charge of everything. And, and listen, white people, white people, how would you feel if you lived in a society where you, all your police officers, all your teachers, all your, all your heads of state, all of your CEOs and your bosses were black? Think about it for a minute. Just ponder that. Ponder that. Okay. That's what that's what their tender is. Their tender is they are going to be the minority. In Texas, Hispanic people have now reached over the 50% line. White people see their way of life going out the window. They don't have the power anymore. And you don't even know the power you have. You simply don't know because it's innate. When you walk into a grocery store or a shopping center, you're treated. Like a white person, you don't know how you're treated. We don't have any idea what a person of a different color experiences. And we're never going to have any idea. Never. Not possible. So that's what their tender is. So now you see that going to hell in a handbasket, right? No, we're not. Because even though the tender has been ignited, in, let's go back to America for a second. In the United States of America, we have enough. We have enough. We have a different balance. They're saying than the 1960s or the 1930s or you know the Civil War, whatever. There's more people of other races that have more power, more education, and there's more people of other races that just see this shit for what it is. Whether whatever whether they have power or education doesn't matter. They're like, this is wrong. We also have more white people that are saying, 
this is wrong. So there's a different power quotient now than there was in the 50s, than there was in the 60s or the 70s. It's not enough, but it is different. And I do think that the, the, the people in the middle, so this is what it all boils down to. Yeah, the people on the right, yeah, the people on the left, okay? We know who we are. We know what we want. We know what we stand for. It's the people in the middle that don't watch politics, that don't care about politics. Maybe they care more about sports. Maybe they care more about celebrities. Maybe they care more about paying the rent. Maybe they care more about, you know, buying food. And sadly, they feel like they have been so um, alienated in their own country they feel like none of this matters anyway it doesn't matter who my mayor is it doesn't matter who my governor is it doesn't matter who my president is it doesn't matter nothing helps me nothing affects me that is changing you want to know why because we were sent some crazy ass republicans i'm sorry i'm cussing a lot but anyway is what it is we were sent these republicans who somehow came out of their, you know, dark snake holes after Obama and said, we don't like where this is going. We better get active. We better show our faces, take our hoods off. And they're over here passing laws that affect the middle. Like taking away their right to abortion and and just basically doing everything they can to make these people's lives terrible. Now, add to that these young people that I believe are a lot of star seats. A lot of them haven't spent 400 lives on this planet. I have very few lives on this planet. And those of us like that don't buy into platforms. We're not joiners. We don't join things. We're outsiders. So as an outsider... They are going to, they can see things differently because they're an outsider. The new kids are outside of all of that. We don't understand capitalism. We don't understand why we're doing this to the environment. And we don't understand why Big Pharma wants to create a pill that is exactly the same molecular uh, structure as a plant. Just get the plant instead of killing it. Right. Because we don't understand the greed, the profit, the capitalism structure. So you have these kids that are coming up that are going to change all that, too. This is why I'm hopeful. Yes, tinder has been ignited, but we all deal with wildfires real and or, you know, in our in our lives. And we deal with it and we're going to deal with this. The wildfire is going to get put out in America. It's, it's getting put out now. You see the Republican Party imploding. We told you it would. It's right now imploding with this whole speaker madness that's going on. It's happening right now. I feel like, I really feel positive about the United States. Are we going to have bad days? Yes, we are. Are we going to have terrible things happen? Yes, we are. We don't live in Nirvana. I keep telling you guys you bought the wrong ticket. We live in a bipolar <laughs> That's what it is. A bipolar earth, a duality earth, a good and bad earth. Okay. Now, as far as this thing going on with Hamas, I should just make this whole video just about Hamas and do the question separately. This whole thing about Hamas and and the and the wildfire that's erupting in the Middle East, it's it's got more. It's got more fuel and the fuel is deeper. It's a really a deep, like uh, when you have buried coals in, in the sand and, and you know, the sand is cool, but if you dig down to those coals, it's burning hot and it can burn for a long time. That's what they're showing me. So now the coals have found air and, and it's going to flare up. What I, what I know, what I think is going to happen when I, I want to, they said no. And I said, think, cause I don't know if I want to sign on to the no. I don't know that I want to say, I know. I think I want to say, I think, but they want to say they know but anyway, whatever. Um, I see 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, right. We, we have to honor, I am just going to make this all about this and then I'll do your questions separately. We have to honor we, the world, the world has to honor our differences better. Um, these two groups, uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians, uh, that were, that were put on this land or not put on this land, the Palestinians were on the land. You know, you guys, this, all of these lands have been fought over, have been won, have been taken back, re-won, fought over. This is how humans were very warlike. But now in this timeline, we seem to have settled for the most part on boundaries and borders, except for Russia and Ukraine. Um, we we mostly have, you know, since World War II, we've, we've been pretty good about maintaining our borders boundaries and borders mostly but these two groups after world war ii were were put on this land or i mean i know that i know that that's not exactly right but they were asked to share this land and if you look at the map as the years have gone by israel has has expanded and the palestinian land has has shrunk and then and that's not fair it's not fair to, to palestinians it's none of this is fair Israel wants their own their own state, their own country, and the Palestinians want theirs too. And it's not working like this. And so what the guide showed me last week before I left, but I haven't talked a lot about this because this is a tender. This is y'all are going to be on one side or the other, and there's not going to be anybody. Nobody's going to want to see the middle. And I, I don't want to get you guys divided. But the truth of the matter is we have to come to the middle. And the truth of the matter is I see a two-state solution. End of story. Two state solution. I understand that Israel signed on a state and Palestine never agreed to it. And this is where we are now. What I see, and I see this in the type of serious and uh, un, unrelenting, inflexible energy that I also saw what was happening to Ukraine, is that I see that land being bifurcated. That's the word they always want to use with this. So it's split in half. And I see Israel getting the Southern half of it and Palestine getting the Northern half of it. I don't understand if it's going to be 60, 40, 50, 50, 80, 20. I don't know, but I do know the Palestine isn't going to, the Palestinians are not going to be removed from this land. They, they will not be end of story. So if that's the case, Something has to be done. So that's what I see. I see a border between Israel and Palestine. And then I see borders of other countries. So they would only share one border. It wouldn't be like it is now where there's a circle in the middle of Israel or a little section in the middle of Israel. Okay. Now, the thing that, that people would say is what about Jerusalem? Because then I think... In, in that scenario that I see, Jerusalem would then go to Israel, and this is this this is not gonna this is not gonna be a good thing. So I saw a comment, and I think this is really the when I and I sure I saw it because the guides directed me to see it. Um, the comment said, "Make Jerusalem a UNESCO World Historic Site, and have it be uh, maintained and guarded by a coalition." of different countries and different religions that want to, uh, the word is lay claim to Jerusalem. So it is not owned by anybody. It is owned by everybody. And they would say, no one owns God. God is everyone. Everyone is God. So this, this idea of my religion is better than your religion, your religion is less than mine or whatever is wrong. It is wrong. So this is a way that this could happen. It, it is Mecca. I don't understand holy Mecca, but anyway, uh, there could be um, there could be uh, access uh, all a uh, twenty four hour access, and it would be safe. And I mean protected, like I mean the kind of protected like um, Mossad or, or Israel. I mean, I mean, and it would be coalition, so that anybody. So let's say you have a coalition 
of uh, some Arab and, and Israel and, and whoever wants to join this coalition, United States, whoever you have a coalition. It's almost like, um, like NATO in a sense. And, and you have this coalition protecting is uh, protecting Jerusalem. And let's say that Hamas sends a bomb over there. Then we all agree that Hamas is the, the problem. And we all deal with Hamas. Okay. Now, how do we get there is through Biden. I swear. I, I don't know how uh, he's going to have some kind of magic thing that he's going to do. He's going to, he, I, I hear peace talks and I hear peace accord. Some of this is also because the world can see with uh, clear eyes, the pain and the agony, the destruction, the atrocities that's happening in Ukraine. And now these same things are happening you know, in Israel and in Palestine and the world is, we're not, we, we have no stomach for it. Humans have no stomach for this. We don't want it. There's no, there's no fire in the bellies of the majority of the humans for this. So you will see people march for peace and that's going to mean something. And then the other thing that's going to happen is that we we have to sit down and Biden is the person to do it. And I, I have to say that sometimes I see Biden do things like go to Israel today. And I think I don't like the optics of this. This is but I but I I feel like judge him at your risk. This man knows more than you do. He is going to sit down with Iran. He's going to sit down with our foes because we have to. We have to. We we. That doesn't mean, because I just asked him a question. It doesn't mean capitulating to bullies. It's it's a careful line to walk because this is how we got Putin. People sat down with Putin and normalized him, normalized his phony elections and gave him a post on the UN Security Council, gave him a seat at the G12 or the G8 or whatever he is, the big economic group. I, I don't know which one he's on. We normalized him. We allowed him to have McDonald's. We said, you're normal. This is the risk. When you normalize tyrants like Iran, when you normalize these countries like Russia, you run the risk of emboldening a dictator, of emboldening a bully, and then you pay the price later. So this is this is not a cakewalk, and it's not for the faint of heart. It's for Biden. He can do this. Then once, and now how he does it is he goes to them and he says, you know, you've got sanctions. You know, we can make a deal with you. That's how he gets this compliance is by making deals. That's what he does. That's what he did in the Senate. He made deals. He went across the aisle. He worked with the devil, right? We have to. We don't have a choice right now because the only other choice is military. The only other choice is to say we're going to deal with you there's no there's no stomach for that there's no stomach for that we're not going to war there's no stomach for it so it's going to have to be through treaties peace treaties and horse good old fashioned horse trading good old fashioned deal making and then he's and then we may have to come back to this right he's going to do what he can right now to put the fire out and i don't see it going out but i do see water on the coals so I see uh, not a raging fire, which is good, not an out of control fire, which is good. I see the fire being contained. And then I see the fire sort of being smothered slowly. And then we're to the coals. And then I see water on the coals. And then I see smoke. Smoke tells me the fire's not out, right? It's not out, but it's, it's containable. And the same thing with the magus. They may all go back underground. You know, they're not going to disappear. They're going to go, this, this rhetoric, this insistence that they're better than everybody else, they're better than other races, that's not going to go underground until we deal with it. So I feel like we'll, we'll tamp this stuff down and I feel like we'll go into, now this is all 24. 24 is rough. Hear me. Watch my videos on how to handle this energy. 24 is rough. It's, it's, it's a freaking, it's like, it's like running 
It's like trying to drive a hundred miles an hour over an obstacle course. You know, you could get whiplash. You could break your jaw just on the drops and jumps. It's not going to be easy, but it is necessary because this is, this is how we, we're confronting the ugly. We're going to see the ugly in 24. We're going to see it. But at the same time, what should give you hope is that we're confronting it. We're saying we have a race problem in the United States. We have a power problem in the United States. We have an unethical judicial system. We have a prison system that is run for profit. We got some problems. This place is a junkyard of greed and power gone amok. Look at it. Look at it. Then roll up your sleeves and get busy. This is your mission. Okay. And you're, and, and this isn't on your head. This isn't you. Many of us are in states where our, my community is so gerrymandered. My, I might as well take my vote and flush it down the toilet for the power it has. So it's frustrating when people say do more. People say, what's wrong with Texas? What's wrong with Florida? It's frustrating because we're here behind enemy lines, y'all, behind enemy lines trying to get this stuff done. Don't demonize us. We're trying to get it done. We're working hard. We're sacrificing. In this part of the world, we don't drive around with Biden stickers. We can't. We fear for our safety. For real. No kidding. So don't hear me say that if you're in a red state, you've got to, it's on you. Don't hear me say that. The, the, the energy is lifting us all up. It's, 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 it's coming underneath you. It's lifting you up. It's like wind beneath your wings. Stay safe. Take care of yourself. Shine your light. That's how we're going to get through this. We have assistance. We have assistance. But when this stuff is ready to change, if we're all sick because we've ingested this energetic poison, and we're not going to get the benefit from those changes. We're not going to get a benefit from the land of milk and honey that's coming. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. Take time out. Take time for yourself. And the way you get to a lot, I have a lot of questions saying, how do I get through this? Watch my video last week on how to get through this. <laughs> it's in my way out Wednesday videos. And it's basically how to deal with the energy every single day. It really gives you down to earth, sensible ways of dealing with this because we have to a lot of people a lot of these magus that are consuming this poison are going to exit because at the same time mother earth is ascending she got her pay raise and her pay grade and she's ascending and i know you say how can she get a pay rate and a pay a pay grade raise when we're when she's burning and dying honey it comes from the inside her vibration at the core is rising. She's much bigger than us. We can try to kill all her plants and kill her rivers and blow stuff up and kill each other. We can we can do that. We're gnats on her ass. Okay? She can regenerate. She has regenerated. You know, think about your history for a moment. Think about woolly mammoths and dinosaurs and Cro-Magnon. Think about that. Was it pretty? No. But she survived. Think about the ice age. She survived. She changed. She mutated. She's doing that right now. And my point is, is that the human beings that are going to stay on this planet are going to have to ascend too. Now we're not going to be, I keep telling y'all, we're not going to, this is bad Disneyland. It's not going to be Nirvana. As she, as she ascends, it doesn't mean that we're all going to be holding hands, singing peace and love. We're always going to have differences, but the tolerance of those differences are going to be much more manageable. Okay. Right now, the tolerance is out of whack. And I told you guys many times when the tolerance gets out of whack, our planet's vibration gets out of whack. And then we start jacking with other existences vibrations and then they send their people to our planet like the alien popo and they're like what are y'all doing down here 
and they come down here and they make us clean up our room and stop playing our music too loud. And that's what's happening. That's where the help is coming from. <laughs> so these people will go because their tolerance is way out of whack. It's extreme. It's extreme. Don't be extreme. Don't be extreme on the right. Don't be extreme on the left. Get your tolerance somewhere here. I don't have to love these people. I don't have to agree with them. I can think they're wrong. They don't have to love me. They don't have to agree with me. And they, don't, and they can think I'm wrong. But we have to do it in a tolerance that allows us both to live. When one side says, I'm better than you and you can't live, that's when the extreme is too big. And that's when we'll get help. And we are getting help. Even though I see 24 being pretty topsy-turvy, what I see is a lot of wins. I see us looking at the ugly and going, we're not going to deal with this anymore. We're not. And we're going to do what we need to do to fix it. And then we're going to put pressure on the powers that be to fix it. So I see us getting in the streets. I see people striking. I see people sta standing up and saying, this food is poisoning us. This company is poisoning us. Po this com com company is poisoning our rivers. This state government doesn't have our best interest in heart, in mind. And we've come to the realization that there's more of us than there are them. And those majorities will go out into the streets and they will link hands and they will sing Kumbaya and they will stand for peace. And as we do that, I see more and more people joining us. I see the Muslims and the Israelis and all the races and all the sexual orientations coming together, holding hands and walking down the street. Like, F with this. Go ahead and try. We are humanity. And we're together. We're walking together. We're standing together. Right? That is an emotional picture. And I, I hope to hell that it really happens, that it, that it physically manifests. And I hope I'm in the middle of it. Some of you have done this. Some of you have are old enough that you protested in the 60s. I have been to a few protests where I felt the love. I felt the connection where I felt the power of those people. And it is tremendous. That's what's going to get us through this. In the meantime, don't listen. Don't listen to crazy news stories that upset you because you can't, it's not helping you to watch a terrible news story about something that happened in Ukraine or Palestine or Israel or Africa or the United States. Did, did when you watch that, did that magically help those people? It didn't. What it did is it magically effed up your energy. Now you're out of commission. You are one soul light down. Sometimes we're not down. Okay. And you better believe that if one of our soul lights, one of our light workers is down, the rest of us are standing. But we can't have all of us have our light dimmed through depression and agony because of what's happening. We cannot allow us to say that if I'm happy and singing and dancing when others are experiencing horrible conditions or violence, therefore I shouldn't sing and dance. Who won? Who's winning? Who's winning? The terrorists are winning because they took out those people in the, in the 3D physical reality and they took out all those other people over there that aren't even in that physical 3D reality. They took all those lights offline. They won. Don't do it. Sing and dance for those people. Sing and dance for those people. They want you to. They need you to. Consider that they are loaning you their soul light to keep for them. Consider that. Take their soul light and allow them to feel joy 
through you. Keep their soul light alive by shining yours brightly. That's the way through this. So watch the funny movie, watch the funny shows, go watch comedians, listen to upbeat music, and love yourself. Love yourself. When we love ourselves, our light shines brighter. And then that light is, is infectious and it, it spreads to your family, to your coworkers, to your neighborhood. Have you ever visited a town or a city that you felt was evil, that you felt was dark? Have you ever done that? A house? What happened is that those people's soul light was diminished. When a city experiences so much darkness, the inhabitants' soul lights start to dim. That city's light dims. And that darkness brings in more darkness. Imagine if we all allowed our soul light to dim. Imagine that. So you have a responsibility. Your responsibility is not to worry for Ukraine or anybody else, Israel, Palestine, the whoever, because that's dimming your soul light. Your responsibility is to take care of your soul light. Be gentle with yourself. Love yourself. If we all loved ourselves, we wouldn't have Trump. We wouldn't have hateful people because we wouldn't. There wouldn't be energetic space for them. There wouldn't be energetic space for so much hate. Again, we're not going to be nirvana, but let's keep, let's keep that hateful energy, that dark energy in its place. Let's keep it to a minimum. Let's keep it there. We need it. We need it there. We need to be reminded what's at stake. We need to be reminded to have compassion for those people. We need that in our equation, but we don't need it to be the primary energy. We don't let it, we don't need to let it get out of hand. And that's, that's what's happening. It's not going to happen because there's more of us that are waking up. There's more of us that are waking up to love. There's more of us that are waking up to what's really important and what isn't. And what isn't is what somebody else looks like or who they love or what they worship. I'm going to do another video with your questions. Every once in a while, I get emotion. I get emotional at these videos. Not very often, but it happens. But I'm going to blame this on that portal that I was in the middle of. I mean, just two days ago, I was in a freaking, some kind of tsunami energy portal. And um, it changed me. <laughs> it really did change. That, that weekend with my with my event, the guides say irrevocably, irrevocably changed me. Uh, my atoms got blown apart and then they got put back together in a new way. And some of that was uh, me and my own personal limiting beliefs that I addressed. That, that was a culmination of addressing my limiting beliefs around certain things. Some of it was being in the power of people. Being surrounded by like-minded people, spending three days with a hundred plus people that believe what like I do, that supported each other, having, you know, seven different healers and psychics work on us, heal us. And I'm not trying to brag about my event. I'm telling you, go to an event, find your people. There's some of this that needs to be done in person. There's only, you know, this is good. This is, this is good, but there is a difference when you can find your people. So that's another way to deal with these energy. F go to your crystal shop. Just stand there so that you're surrounded by people who feel like you. You don't have to go to a class. You can just visit places that feel like your people. We've really been separated from our, our soul light. On purpose. This was all done on purpose, right? And then the pandemic made it worse. We separated from everybody. 
go out, get out in your community, get out in nature, take fun classes, cooking classes, art classes, poetry classes, swing dancing classes, take anything. Doesn't matter. You're not trying to become an expert. You're just trying to expand your energy again because our energy has gotten very small. And this wet blanket, this, this, this dimming of our light has happened. And as you wake up, as you wake up again, it's almost as if we've been asleep. And as we wake up again, I want you to ground because when I came back from this event, I was high as a kite. I, I seriously was spiritually as high as a kite. And you know, you know what that looks like. You're, you're not in your body. You're not in your head. You're not on this planet. So as you expand and have your spiritual awakening again, you need to ground, get grounding crystals, whatever that is for you. Look up grounding crystal, buy something on Etsy or Amazon that has a grounding crystal and wear it as a, I mean, I wear moonstone all the time. I wear what, what feels good today. I'm wearing amethyst. That's another calming crystal. When I had my awakening, I had a grounding crystal ring that I had to wear every day, every day. You can also ground by meditating or just seeing your body, your, your energy going into the earth. Also, fair warning, we eat to ground. So if you find that you're a little lightheaded physically or energetically, you're, you're going to be eating more. I ate my way through Chicago. <laughs> I, I really did. I ate my way through Chicago. Y'all got some good pizza, y'all. But, um, you know, that's because I was not grounded the whole time I was there. I was like, Woo! you know, I was all up in some other planet. So, you know, you can gain weight by grounding, you know. So be aware of that. Think about that. Okay. And if you feel like you want to eat for no reason, perhaps really all you need to do is ground. You can drink some water. You can, you know, sit and ground yourself in a meditation. You can go out and walk barefoot in the grass, hug a tree. Uh, you can even, um, to a degree, you can, you know, it's interesting. You really, it's really interesting that small pets don't really ground you quite as much. Cats ground, cats ground. Dogs don't ground as much. They, some can but little ones, I don't know what, why I'm telling you this, but little animals don't ground as much. Horses are like grounding, like big. Horses, donkeys, bigger animals tend to have this bigger energy to ground you. Uh, but for some reason, cats can and some, some dogs can. But, you know, find what works for you. It'll make you feel better. Okay. Honor yourself. Honor yourself love yourself, take good care of yourself. I'm not kidding you guys, I'm not kidding you. You can come out the other side of this broke down and sick, or you can come out the other side of this feeling the best you've ever felt. This is your choice. It's how you deal with the energy, okay? I'll be back with your political questions um, and I'll have a way out Wednesday as well. And let me know what you think in the comments. and. Uh, Take really good care. For entertainment purposes only.